Hey, I just figured I'd check in with all of you. It's good to see you again. So I just wanted to talk about a little bit of stuff. I've been away for a while. I've been doing my engineering classes, and I've been keeping up with computer hardware in the meantime. Got a lot of time on my hands to look at that stuff, but still got to study and everything. So I just want to chime in on everything, and if you hear something in the background, that's probably my pet parrot who just doesn't know when to shut up. But anyways, I just wanted to remark on how 2017's been going, and I think that we really should be stepping our changes up when it comes to computer stuff. But I just want to comment on the whole RGB craze for a second, and even on the computer case craze. First of all, let's start with RGB. I don't like RGB, okay? I know the appeal of it, I know that it makes your case look all pretty and everything, but to me, a computer should not be some sort of artistic statement, it should be a functional machine. The problem with LEDs is they're not 100% efficient at converting energy into light. So there's some thermal excess energy that's released into the computer case. So not only are you taking extra energy that could be used for processes on your CPU, for your GPU, you're taking that away and you're turning it into light that scatters into nowhere. And half the time you're not even looking at the computer and in fact if you've got it up on the table next to you, it's spitting out extra light that you don't need which is just annoying. And the other part is you've got extra radiant heat. Now LEDs, they are fairly power efficient but the power that they take in they do give off excess thermal energy, which is funny because we always try to minimize the excess thermal energy in our systems. So this is really what's pissing me off. The big thing is the theme of it, the aesthetics. It's all about looking pretty. I like stuff with function. Should have a good form, but it should also have a good function, okay? I care about the hardware, I care about the airflow, I care about the cooling. If you take a look at the design I had for the 1080 Ti contest, I know my video wasn't the best, and I'm really pissed off that none of the judges, from what I could tell from the video statistics, watched anywhere past a minute to a minute and a half into the video, which is when I really started getting into the meat of it, which is what I should have done in the first place. The problem was, I was falling behind on schoolwork. I wasn't keeping up with my homework because I was too busy working on this video, working on the artwork for that. And then when I went to go put it all together, I felt sick when I was making the video. And guess what? My software was also being a bit of a bitch. It wasn't cooperating with me. So that got very annoying. And I never really got to put that perfect picture, that final version of everything all put together. And I never quite got it in just right into the video. And it really pissed me off. But what I found to be even more annoying was I took a look at the contest winners. When you take a look at the winners, here's what you see. I'll let you take a look for a moment. Do you see any issues? Bad airflow. Not a lot of functionality. In fact, when you take a look at one of those winning cases, which was the Fantech Evo case, was it the Fantech Evo, Fantech Evolve, something like that. When you take a look at it, you'll realize one of the judges for the contest was a guy whose YouTube channel is called Jay's Two Cents and his case nearly killed his Ryzen 7 1800X, which is pitiful, which is, it's, it's stupid because why would you pick a case for such a powerful CPU that has such a high TDP, and why would you put it in something that has terrible airflow? Sadly, this has been the trend for the PC case producers in 2017. The most popular cases strangle the computers. They do not provide a good platform for everything. Yeah, you got places to mount things on the inside, but where is the airflow? You need to cool this case off. Hell, Linus Tick Tips just did a video where they made a computer case out of nothing but radiators. Now let's take a look at my design from the contest. Do you see the giant heat sink, the giant vapor chamber heat sink on the side of the case? Yeah, that one. That's supposed to be functional. There'd be copper tubing and a hookup point for some flexible lines to go from the coolant pump to a pipe leading to this back and forth copper pipe assembly behind that giant heat sink to disperse heat outside of the case. So you're not pumping hot air into the case. You don't have to worry about dust buildup because it's a large open area where you could just use a leaf blower or take the uh, cover off and wipe it down with a towel. It's nothing, it's no problem. And that's in addition to another radiator that's already on top. A three x 120 radiator up on the top. I thought this through. I put a lot of dedication into making it functional. That throttle on the front, you can raise it all the way up to completely activate your computer and keep everything going. But in the off chance that the cooling system isn't doing its job perfectly, you could manually shut the computer off through the settings, opening up the little Windows tab at the bottom, and just looking down here and going shut down. Okay? It's If the computer is running too hot, you could just shut it down that way and then bring the throttle down to reset the switch and then bring it most of the way up, but not all the way up, to get the system running. 
it'll run the pump, it'll run the coolers, it'll run the fans, and it will cool the system down for you. You could do that easily. But the problem is nobody put the effort into thinking that much into it. This stuff was an artistic statement and it pisses me off because even the judges, they're using these same cases. They're going, oh, what the hell's going on here? Listen, dude, I've been going to Jay's Two Cents' channel, learning about water cooling, learning about radiator setup, learning about all this and all that, how to cool the system, how to keep it running nice and smooth. And even this guy went full retard and didn't manage to cool his case off properly because he picked the wrong case. And that's because this year had a bad case lineup. So what do you get? Nowadays, we are combining these high thermal output computers with extra RGB that are only going to make the case just a tiny bit hotter and every little bit counts. Every little bit of wasted energy counts. It's a limited resource and we should be using it appropriately. That is my opinion on the topic. Screw the RGB craze. I've got a radiator, okay? I just bought a water cooler because I'm planning to upgrade from my i5-6400 to an i5-7600K. And I want that water cooler there just to make sure that I can keep everything running coolly and smoothly. Luckily, I've got a computer case from a friend of mine. He couldn't get it to run, but it is water cooling capable. So he gave it to me and I managed to get it up and running. And it's perfectly set up for a 2 by 120 millimeter radiator, which is exactly what this is. The annoying thing is, though, it's one of those thermal take ring 240 millimeters with RGB so I've got to disable that or just hook it straight up to the motherboard which isn't much of a big issue but I'm tired of this whole RGB craze I don't want RGB I don't want all this complication in terms of setting everything up I just want a functional system that stays cool and doesn't raise my power bill extremely high because I spend a lot of time on my computer okay and I do a little bit of gaming occasionally I'll make videos I'll do SFM animations and really I don't want to waste too much more energy, which is really what's pissing me off about the market these days. They're making it into situations where your case is going to be hotter because it can't get enough airflow, so your fans are going to ramp up like crazy. And on top of that, you're throwing out extra energy through this RGB. It is insane. It is pissing me off. And honestly, it's pissing off a lot of other people too. So nowadays, you actually have to pay a premium in some cases to get a computer without RGB, unless you go with a cheap little OEM computer that doesn't even have a graphics card, that just relies on Intel's integrated graphics on some old, outdated desktop CPUs. On the topic of that, I'm really pissed off at Intel as well for their Extreme Series chips, because they didn't really do enough to compete. They barely did enough as is, and it really pissed me off because they could have done so much. In fact, I think they should try and make Coffee Lake backwards compatible at least in some way, even if they drop the core clocks with the BIOS, if they can make it backwards compatible for Z270. They should go ahead and do that. They owe their consumers that much. So there's my two cents on that. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.